Welcome to the Powerful Posing Bootcamp. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Denise Birdsong and I teach photographers how to become masters of the craft. For those of you that do know me, welcome back guys. We're going to have a blast. Today, I'm gonna to bring you actionable education, information, and tools that are gonna set you on a path to freedom and confidence when you're posing your subjects. You're gonna learn how to create an amazing pivot in the way that you pose your clients and really up your game. I'm really excited to dive into this. How about you? Yeah? Okay, well then let's get at it. We're gonna start by talking about that missing piece. You know, it's, it's that thing that's holding you back from executing posing like a master of your craft. And in order to fully understand this missing piece, embrace this lesson and take in all that we need to, we're gonna need to be open and, and lean in and take some time to be introspective because I really want you to take away all you can from this boot camp. So we're gonna work from a place of open-mindedness and a desire for growth. So I want you to take a moment, really look inward, be honest with yourself, try and be free of fear and think, has there ever been a time that you felt that, ugh, that, that gnawing feeling that something was missing when you were looking at your work? I know that I've felt that way before. And by taking this time to shine a light on it without any kind of judgment, we can actually examine it and we can learn from it and we can grow. So if you're anything like me and you've felt this way before, leave me a hands up in the comments and raising your hand for me, it actually fosters room for an open and safe environment where we all know that we're not in this alone. We're, we're in this together, guys. I like to call it leveling the playing field, what I'm teaching. And this is when we can work together and feel like we're in a safe environment. We can all become so much stronger. And I know there is hand after hand going up right now, creating that safe space where we can say, yeah, I have felt that way before. And you know what? You're not alone and you're not alone in your journey. So many of us want to learn and grow. And so many of us can feel stuck and insecure and not confident. And at some time or another, we've all felt that, that yucky, inadequate feeling, that missing piece. So the question is, why are we all feeling this missing piece? Well, I'm gonna tell you why. It's because deep down, your intuition is telling you that there's something missing from your work. And that missing thing, it's a deep intuition about an undeveloped skill. There's actually a hole in your knowledge that needs to be fully understood. And, and it's okay, you're not alone. Very few people have this skill. And there's a reason why. You know, unlike widespread art education, Photography and the education surrounding it has really begun to truly blossom very recently because photography was originally taught to just merely capture a moment. But in this century, we see that we can use photography like any other artistic medium to create beautiful and moving works of art. But in order for us to create, we need to be able to control more than just our cameras and lighting. We also need to collaborate with the subjects before us. And that is exactly where the missing link in education is. We have no resources to teach us how to truly direct the average person in order to achieve our creative vision. The education surrounding posing is so limited and the art of emotion, well, it's basically non-existent. So relatively speaking, when compared to the other arts, we're, we're truly a very young genre. And as this relatively new medium, photography is not even regarded as one of the traditional seven forms of art. It's just an offshoot of the visual arts. And I don't know if you knew, but artists from the Surrealist and Dada movement, they didn't even start using the medium in an artistic manner until about 1924. That's not even a hundred years ago, guys. 
And until then, like I said before, photography was simply a means to capture a moment and form. And sadly, oftentimes it still is. You know, we don't have thousands of years of education and growth and evolution behind us, unlike painting and dance and sculpting, poetry, prose, and and so on. Posing in body language, emotion, these are the things that are the undeveloped side of photography education because we have no resources to teach us how to truly direct and coach, embrace and execute emotive imagery for the average person until now. So during this free powerful posing boot camp, you and I, we're going to cover some really amazing concepts. And I want to assure you of a few things. This is not your typical education. We're going next level. This is not do as I do education. What I'm about to teach you can be tailored to your process so that you can create powerful images and refine your very own signature style because this this transcends genre. It doesn't matter if you shoot weddings in boudoir or boudoir only beauty or couples or high school seniors. It, it really doesn't matter because this is relevant for all of the portrait genres that we work in and that you create. So the concepts that we're covering together are going to change the way that you see body language forever. The art of emotive photography is a proven methodology used by my students to get powerful images. And today I'm going to be sharing with you one pillar of this method that's going to get you started creating impactful images right away. And because I really want to deliver the goods, I have a few giveaways that I'll discuss with you at the end of this boot camp. You're going to want to stay tuned to learn more about them. I wholeheartedly believe in community over competition. And in the spirit of that, I'd like to thank Elena Marr of the Boo DIY Uncensored Community, who's one of my friends and also one of our amazing sponsors for this boot camp. And if you've ever wanted a place to share your work without the Facebook bots coming after you, or you want the ability to access amazing lighting, styling, and editing tutorials tailored to the boudoir genre specifically, then Boo DIY Uncensored is totally for you. I mean, besides monthly tutorials and forum, members also enjoy exclusive discounts and perks, contests, and a lot more. So you should go and check out BooDIY.com for more great content. And thanks again to Boo DIY for sponsoring this boot camp and allowing me to bring you some really awesome free education. Go check it out. So there's a really common mistake that I see hesitant and unsure photographers making unknowingly all the time. I see it within the industry at large and I get to see it up close and personal with my incoming students. It is a detrimental problem that gets in the way of you fully realizing your potential. What's even worse is that it keeps so many of you in opposing rut, unable to create in the absence of mental chaos and it's memorized posing. If you've been a photographer for any length of time, then you've probably tried memorizing poses. I mean, we all do to some extent, but it seems to me that's where the growth stops. And I know you might be thinking, uh, okay, Denise, I kill it with my memorized posing routine. And yeah, you might have a memorized posing routine you know will produce images that are gonna sell, yet you still feel a void or you wouldn't be here. And oftentimes you're bored with your work, always looking for ways to shake things up. And if you're a newer photographer, you might lack a routine at all and are always feeling a bit lost and unsure. So I wanna show you how highly skilled photographers are actually able to come up with endless posing options no matter what type of setting they find themselves in. Make sure you're here for day two, October 29th, where we'll take your new posing skill to the next level for images that have your inbox exploding with DMs with people begging to work with you. And I want to remind you about our breakthrough challenge giveaway. So before we move into this lesson, I have three things that I want to share with you. One of you is actually going to be winning 
a hundred dollars to spend on anything you like. It could be lipstick, perfume, shoes, presets, gear, whatever your heart desires. And as we're going through the boot camp, I want you to actually follow along in the workbook that we've provided you. And I want you to write down your biggest breakthrough moments or your biggest aha moments, and then head over to the Facebook group, which is stripped down the art of emotive photography and leave a comment with your breakthrough and hashtag bootcamp breakthrough so that I can find you. This is really important because I'm going to be giving away a one-on-one -on -one mentor session with me. And finally, you need to attend day two of this workshop. This is where we're really going to build upon what I'm teaching you today and learn how to soar in regards to creating images you've always dreamed of. So let's just stop what we're doing right now. Everyone just stop. Take out your, your devices, um, set yourself a reminder, put it in your notebook or put it on a sticky note, just get it down. Day two is going to be October 29th at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Okay, I wanna make sure that we got that reminder set. Again, October 29th at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I pinky swear, this is really going to take what we learned today and build upon it in ways you can only dream of. On day two, I'm gonna be showing you exactly what's needed to take your images from just pretty pictures to absolutely unparalleled art, but that's for day two. And with that, let's make sure you stay till the end to win either the $100 or the one-on-one -on -one mentor session with me. So for now, I want you to follow along with me and we're gonna have an awesome Q&A session at the end of this training where I'm gonna be able to answer all of your questions, fill in any gaps that you might have and really build a bridge in your knowledge that will set you on a path to freedom and posing. Today, we're gonna to learn an amazing pivot in posing that will keep you from ever blanking on poses during a session again. It's one of the components in creating powerful images that I wanna to give to you because I'm ready to see you all take it up a notch and worry less about the posing process. So let's talk about where we are now. Most photographers approach posing with the intention to memorize a pose they've seen or something they've created before. They, they want to imitate a genuine moment or emotion that's depicted in the human condition. And posing is your base, the starting ground for realizing the skill set. But memorizing posing seems to me like a flawed approach. So let me give you an example. You don't memorize each setting combination that's available on your camera, right? I mean, of course not. That would be nearly impossible. Instead, we all operate within the rules of ISO, shutter speed, aperture, focal length, and so on. And having these guidelines actually enable you to narrow the possibilities, which allows you to operate within parameters so that you can get the exposure results you're looking for. I want you to think about it like this. Okay, I'm getting married and, and I ask you to be in my bridal party. I tell you, go to Nordstrom, pick a dress for yourself, with no further direction. That's it. That's all I tell you. Ugh. I, <laughs> okay, well, what happens? Your mind races. There are so many possibilities and options. Which one of the options or possibilities is going to be the right one? I've left you with this huge little black rain cloud kind of hanging over your head and trying to find this dress so that you can be in my wedding. Your mind is literally overwhelmed with possibilities. I imagine you would enter Nordstrom more than a bit hesitant, completely unsure, and it would take a long time to shop with all of those thoughts running through your mind. Now, conversely, if I said, hey, I'm getting married, I really want you to be in my bridal party. The wedding is gonna be intimate, but slightly formal. So I want you to go pick out a shorter mid-length black cocktail dress that you love and that you're gonna be able to wear again. Nordstrom has a great selection right now. So go pick out that gorgeous black cocktail dress that you feel great in and that you love. Well, okay, now we're talking, right? You know exactly what section to shop in. You can shop the dresses that fit into the parameters I've given you. 
you can make the decision quickly and the decision's yours. As opposed to the scenario I just laid out for you, heavily memorized posing routines can limit our focus until all creativity is just sucked out the window and we're completely overwhelmed. And this is exactly one of the reasons why as photographers, we become bored and unsatisfied with the same old posing routine. We memorize poses that we've seen from others or that we've pinned or we've saved or we've found in posing guides. And it's like we've been sent to Nordstrom for someone else's cocktail dress. We're trying to get their dress in their size, in their colors. And what's worse, we expect to memorize 20 plus poses at once. That's like going to Nordstrom with the intent to find 20 plus dresses different dress types, colors, sizes, all for memorization. And trust me, as an avid shopper and, and longtime photographer, I can tell you neither one of these scenarios work out very well. It's chaos and it really is unnecessary. If memorizing poses were one of the key components to creating the work that you desire, then your posing routine would never leave you feeling bored or worse, less than right? You know, I knew something was really different about my posing the first time my now business partner, Lacey, came to see me in California. Um, she happened to sit in on one of my sessions and while I was shooting, she kept asking me like, what are you doing here? And how did you get this? And why are you doing this like that? And honestly, up until that point, really not having spent much time working in the space with other photographers, I sort of figured that everyone was doing what I did. But then more and more of my peers within the industry started asking me a lot of hows and whys about my process. And so many people were asking that I decided to throw together a few small workshops to share with my peers all of the components that make up the methodology I learned from being my mother's daughter and from my background as a ballet dancer and a model. And after the workshop, I received so many breathtaking before and after images from my students that I just kind of knew I needed to share this with the world. And I want you to see for yourself the transformations that a couple of my students have achieved. They're absolutely brilliant. So we're gonna start with Stephanie Wells. She's one of my master students. And this is Stephanie's before picture, before taking strip down. And it's a pretty picture. We've got a, a beautiful subject. We've got nice lingerie. It's pretty lighting. It's a nice editing. Everything about it is nice. It's a, it's a pretty picture. But there's something missing. And now we have Stephanie's after images, which are just gorgeous. They're full of the human condition. They're full of life. They're full of emotion. They're just, I mean, I'm just going to do this again. I mean, this is night and day kind of stuff, guys. It's amazing. And then I'm going to move on to Amy Catlin, who was one of my 2020 students. And again, we have a typical boudoir pose. Um, we've got the lingerie. We've got the fur. We've got the floor. We've got the laying. We've got all the stuff that's boudoir photography. And it's a pretty picture, but when we look at her after, oh my God, like the difference is unbelievable. Like just, ugh, I'm so proud of Amy. This is just amazing and incredible work. I'm going to do it again. We've got her before. Oh, pow. We got that after. And that's what we're going for. Images that jump off the screen and just pull you in and are incredibly beautiful and impactful and meaningful and stand out from everybody else. And you guys, I have hundreds of transformations like this. It's mind blowing the way photographers flourish with this methodology. And as part of my signature methodology, I created this brilliant tool that can be used as a scaffolding for posing something that eliminates the clutter we have in our brains and actually allows you the freedom in creation. And I'm going to teach you this tool today. And the guidelines I've created, they're very similar to the set of guidelines we use when we're working with our cameras. 
The existing guidelines we've learned to use with our cameras allow us to control the outcome of the image without being overwhelmed by all of the possibilities. They leave you with a set of options to actually nail your purpose. And I've done the same thing with posing. I've created boundaries or parameters for you to pose in that allow you to create from a place of clarity, freedom, and authenticity. And I want you to remember, this is not a do as I do. I'm not here to create mini Denise's. That's not my goal or what I want to do here. I really want to see your authentic self in your work. And it's important to note that, again, this transcends genres. If you shoot boudoir, wedding, families, couples, seniors, all of that kind of stuff, it doesn't matter because honestly, this is relatable and actionable in every single portrait genre. So why don't we do this? Let's talk about categorical thinking. I want to introduce you to another one of our awesome sponsors, the High Rollers Club. And I really want to thank them for sponsoring our Powerful Posing Bootcamp, which is allowing me to bring you this free education. So with the High Rollers Club, you actually have the power to book your first 10 boudoir photography clients in less than two months. And it's really that simple. And not just any 10 clients, but bookings that are going to lead you to an average sale of $2,000 per sale. And this isn't fluff. I like, I've seen this happen over and over and over again with my students who are actually in their course. So if you're starting your boudoir business or you're just at a place in your business where you want to get your sales up and kind of get a better handle on your business, the High Rollers Club six week course is where you're going to learn the foundational lessons to maximize profits and improve your brand. There's no fluff, and let's see if I can get this word right, no philosophizing. <laughs> this academy has one goal and one goal only, and that is to get you immediate results. So if you're ready to start the business of your dreams or just take your business up a notch, you should go visit thehighrollersclub.io. I want to thank them again for sponsoring this and allowing me to bring you this free education today. What is categorical thinking and posing? Well, categorical thinking is an incredible tool that allows you to open yourself up to endless possibilities. And it goes back to some pretty cool brain science. And whether you know me or not, I'll tell you right now, I nerd out with the science stuff, it's so cool. Um, and through our evolution, we've evolved to use the least amount of energy possible because during our evolution, we actually needed to reserve energy because, well, food was scarce. And prehistoric humans, they didn't often expel energy just for fun. Like, they didn't go on evening jogs. They ran when they were running from danger after food sources, or if they were lucky, maybe after a mate. And because our brain is also a physiological organ, it also reserves energy. And we see that pattern in today's evolution. Our brain literally looks for the path of least resistance all the time. It puts so many of our thought processes on autopilot. For example, do you calculate four times four or do you just use the memorized answer? I'm guessing you use the memorized answer. And using that memorized answer is the path of least resistance. And posing itself is full of brain resistant thinking because there are so many possible outcomes, our brain literally stops itself from moving forward, hence your blank moments. But categorization is a way to save energy in our minds it's because it's impossible to remember hundreds of poses. But if you categorize poses into similar elements, it becomes so much easier to approach all of the possibilities. I mean, look, the highest respected photographers understand this principle. I mean, do you think Annie Leibovitz uses a posing guide? I certainly don't. She intuitively categorizes her poses by characteristics and then she uses them accordingly. So let's dive in and explore these foundations together. The first foundation is standing and these are standing poses and this is any and all poses in a standing position. Number two is sitting. Again, any and all poses in a sitting position. We have our third foundation, which is kneeling. 
And this foundation, any and all poses in a kneeling position. And number four, we're gonna wrap it up with that. That's a lying position. And guess what? That's any and all poses in a lying position. This is where we start to get down and dirty. It's time to play. So we're gonna challenge ourselves to create. I want you to follow along with me as I approach each of the four foundations. And I'm gonna start us off with five simple poses in each foundation. And then I want you to use your vision and creativity to push the envelope even further. We're gonna free up space in our mind, we're gonna ditch the overwhelm, and we're gonna work freely and creatively. So before we get into the demo portion of this, I just wanna break this down one more time for you in a very simple way. So we go into a session, whether it be a boudoir session, whether it be a wedding, couples portraits, whatever it is, and we have this, you know, this big session that we have to deliver and we're thinking about all of the things that we need to do, all of the images that we need to deliver for our clients. And we might have pulled inspiration from posing guides, maybe Pinterest. We might have seen something on Instagram and we're trying to memorize everything and we've got this huge session looming over us and we've got to get all of this stuff done. But with categorical thinking and, and foundational posing, we get to let all of that go. And we get to be in the moment in each foundation. So if we take this great big session and, and we get rid of everything we think we need to memorize and we just start with standing and, and we go in there and we're free of all of the mental chaos and we're able to be creative and we just do all of our standing poses. We have so much more room to be creative and really explore that particular foundation and come up with a ton of amazing poses. And then we do the same thing. We move on to sitting. Now we don't have to worry about those standing poses anymore. Now we're in a seated position and we get to be free and creative. No chaos, no overwhelm, all of that stuff is gone. We're just working on our sitting poses. And then we move into kneeling and we do the same thing. And finally, we wrap it with laying. And what we've done here is we have literally removed this big giant weight that's on us about everything that we need to memorize, everything that we need to accomplish, all of these things that we have to do. And we've put them into categories, parameters, just like the way that we use our camera. We put it into parameters so that we can create creatively and beautifully in each one of these foundations. It's not this big monster that we have to tackle and conquer. It's these foundations. It's this categorical thinking that frees up our brain because our brain wants to take the path of least resistance. And this enables you to do that. And it gives you the space to be fully creative and explore. So with that, Natalia and I are gonna jump into this and you guys are gonna follow along and we're gonna knock this out of the park. You ready? Okay, let's go. Okay, I'm super excited. We're about to get into demo. But before we hop into that, I wanna to explain to you how this demo is gonna work. I want to show you guys the basics of categorical thinking and posing. So we're gonna go through all of the poses. We're gonna go through standing, sitting, kneeling and lying. And the reason we're doing this is because we want to train ourselves to use this type of tool so that we have the mental freedom, the space to be as creative as we want to be, to not be worried about the big overarching picture of all the different poses that we want to create. But we can just work in one foundation and really learn how to nail that foundation. And so we're going to go through this together. It's going to be a little bit like an editor's cut. Um, I'm going to be commenting on some of the footage. I'm not going to be coaching for emotion today, really. I'm really trying to focus on getting you guys to a place where categorical posing starts to become something that you're like, yeah, this, this is cool, and getting it to be something that's natural and something that you're comfortable with. So I'm going to start with five poses in each foundation. And then you are going to have the opportunity to expand upon that 
And we're also going to then see all of the four foundations on one set. And we, once we finish that and we have a really solid understanding of what categorical posing is, then we have this really awesome exercise that we're going to do together that's going to take it to the next level. So I want to set up this next, uh, or this, I should say this first clip, and we are going to be doing a standing set. So I'm going to do five standing poses. Um, we're going to be doing it in my hair and makeup room. And then you are going to take it from there and you are going to create as many additional standing poses as you can think of creating in the space that you're going to see in front of you. So with that, let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so I'm going to have you stand right in the middle of the fireplace. Just a little. Okay, so here we are in my hair and makeup room and I'm setting Natalia up on the fireplace and I really want to stick in my category. I want to stay in my foundation with standing poses so that I can get beautiful images because I could be a little squirrel. There's so many different things for me to be doing in this room that I want to stay focused in my foundation. So I've got my first foundation done and with a slight change in posing we got our second pose in that foundation done. And now we're just going to do a little bit of a change and we've got yet another shot. And then I moved her arm over to the fireplace and I had her lean over towards me and I was able to get some more shots. So we've got our third set up and now we move into our fourth. And it's so easy to just move through this because I don't have to think about all of the other things I want to be doing or should be doing or need to be doing. I really get to just be in the moment with her and be as creative as I want to be and get fantastic shots. It's just such a wonderful way to work. And so within just a couple of minutes, I was able to get quite a few great shots. Now, you guys, this is so easy. You should be able to like nail this no problem. And I also wanted to show you some other pictures that I got of Natalia a um, couple days later at my workshop. And these are also standing poses. So you can get really creative with your standing poses. Keep in mind, these could be in front of a door, in front of a bed, next to a chair, on a backdrop. I mean, it really doesn't matter when you're just sticking to your foundation, you can work anywhere you want. And I also wanted to show you that this can be used for individuals. It's not just for boudoir, it could be portraiture as well. It also can be used with men. Um, using your foundations in categorical posing with men is fantastic. It gives you a ton of variety. It lets you stay really focused. And it can be used with couples. So it could be used with couples for weddings, for portraits, and you can use it with families as well. You just stay within your foundation and create. So next we're moving into a sitting foundation. And we're starting on my black velvet set and I've got her set up for her first shot and I'm just gonna get my first pose and very quickly and very easily because I'm not worried about all of the other things. I'm able to move her into a, her next position and get some additional poses. And if I had taken more time, I could have worked in a cone as well and not only gotten one pose out of this particular way that I'm directing her, but I could have shot it from several different vantage points and angles, creating a ton of variety, which is something that you can do as well. So I think we're two poses in. Now we're working on our third pose. There we go. Oh, I loved this image. Love it, love it. And so quickly, I'm just going to move her around and we're going to move into our next pose. Yep. And again, I have all the room to be creative here because I'm not worried about, oh, what do I need to do when she's standing up? And do I want to get her by the window? And I need to sit her down, you know, on the floor. Or I need to, I'm just, I've got her on the stool and this is where all of my focus is. So I can just bang out a ton of images, a ton of poses really, really quickly. Lots of different looks, lots of different feels. And be free and be creative. And I mean, it takes no time at all. Like this, like a dude. And you're gonna take this elbow and you're gonna put it right there. <laughs> and you're gonna grab onto this ankle with this hand very gently. Very lightly, put that very lightly. The big, beautiful smile for me. Gorgeous, babe.
Okay, so we've gotten through our sitting poses and we caught a great variety with just five poses. And now it's your turn. And I wanted you to see again, I had her in the studio and at the workshop, I created some more sitting poses for you so you could see all of the different and creative things that you can do with just one foundation and a little bit of time. It really does free up your mind for endless possibilities. Again, it doesn't have to be boudoir. It can be done with individual portraiture. It can be done for branding, um, beauty. It works wonderfully when you're shooting men. We're just staying within our sitting foundation and getting loads of great photographs. And it definitely can be used with couples as well. Um, lifestyle, weddings, engagement, family, all across the board. Next up, we're going to move into a kneeling position. So this is our kneeling foundation. And I've got her on the black set again. And I'm getting my first, my first pose. And we're going to make some variations on that. We're going to take this hand and we're going to bring it into, let's bring it into our hair. We're moving into our second. We'll bring this hand forward just a little bit more. Tip your torso. A minor tweak. I just moved her hand back onto the shea. Brought her hand into her hair. Again, so much variety could have gotten out of this. I could have gotten a ton of different emotions. I could have shot it from different vantage points. So much room for creativity. So we make a small tweak and we're moving into our next kneeling pose. Good. And this hand is on your knee, nice and long. And again, just working from different vantage points, coaching for different emotions. So much can come out of this. There's so much creative freedom. So now I'm gonna move her onto the shea. I'm gonna take her off the floor and I'm gonna move her onto the shea. A bit. Good. And you're going and We're gonna have her kneeling there. Aren't you? You're gonna come up just a little bit taller so it's more of a kneeling pose. Beautiful. Can you bring this leg up just a little bit? Beautiful. Just like that. Eyes to me. So happy with the photos that we got. And again, I think I spent less than less than three minutes at max five. <sighs> Beautiful. Bring that chin up just a little. Four. And you're going to elongate this leg for me, nice and long. Keep the knee down. And you can start to see how if you're just focusing on this categorical posing, and you're not worried about all of the different things, standing her up on the set and sitting her down on the set and laying her on the set and this pose you really like and that pose you really like and oh my gosh, squirrel this and shiny bright thing that. And you just really stay in a particular foundation and really explore it. The possibilities are endless. You can create so many beautiful images and again, it really frees you up to be creative. I got all of this in under, I think three, again, three to five minutes max. And I wanted to show you some additional images of her in kneeling poses so you could see some more variety. And how it also works with couples. Works great with couples, guys. Kneeling poses, that foundation is fantastic when you're working with a couple. Okay, so now we're moving into a lying position. So this is a traditional bed set in my studio. Um, and you know, lying position or lying foundation doesn't always have to be in a bed. Um, I just kind of wanted to show this to you, but we're gonna do an exercise a little bit later so we can explore this a little bit further. So we're gonna get her quickly into her different poses. And it's so simple to do when you're not worried about everything else that's going on around you and all of the possibilities. So we've gotten our first pose done and then we make a minor change to it. Get to be a little bit creative, look at it, decide what looks pretty, what's working well for the client, what's working well in the environment. 
bring that knee up and over to me. Lengthen the back leg for me, but keep a bend in it. Good, just like that. And we're gonna come down and we're gonna lay on our side. And we're gonna bring this hand right into our hair. Perfect. This knee's gonna come even more to me. And we're gonna touch. <laughs> Beautiful chin down for me, just a little. Good. We get another lovely shot. This is the bottom of the light stand. Chin up, chin back a little. Beautiful. There's just a tremendous amount of space for creativity. Again, <clears throat> you're working within these foundations and you're just free. You don't have to worry about all of the other things that you need to get because you know that you're going to be able to move on to this and you actually can challenge yourself and push yourself to try new and different things. It's a fun thing that I like to do. I like to try and put myself in one foundation and get a minimum of 20 different poses in that foundation and then shoot it from different vantage points with different emotions to create as much variety as I possibly can. I definitely wouldn't ask a client to hold this for multiple vantage points though. So you can see within a few minutes I've got several great images um, shooting from different vantage points. We would have a tremendous amount of variety and lots of emotion. It also works really well with individuals and you can get creative. You can use stairwells and floors and pianos, whatever's in your environment, just use it. And it works wonderful with couples as well. Okay, so all together now. Um, I'm a huge Beatles fan over here. Um, so we are gonna work on one set. So we're gonna take a look at one of the sets in my studio and we're gonna use all four foundations on this one particular set. So you're gonna come up against the wall. You're gonna have those feet together. I want you nice and close to the plant. And you're gonna take this toe and come up on the toe. You're gonna to push the knee across real hard and push that hip hard for me too. You're gonna to bring this hand down to the knee. You're gonna come forward towards me. This hand's gonna go on the wall. <clears throat> this way, chin comes up. So it's very easy for me to get distracted on this particular set. There are so many possible things that I can do. I want to hop on the bed. I want to, I want to, you know, sit on the shay. I want to put her on the floor in front of the bed. So being really disciplined <clears throat> and staying within my foundation, I'm able to be actually more creative because I'm not worried about all of the other things around me. And I'm just focused on my connection with my client and all of the creative things that I can do in that foundation. They're uh, amazing. Open those eyes just a little bit more. Chin comes to me just a teeny bit more. Perfect. And we're going to push this knee across again. And we're going to bring this hand up over our head like this. And we're going to take this hand and put it right in the stocking. Down in the stocking. Good. Really push your bum against that wall. And arch. Bring your head towards me. Bring your face down like that. Just like that. Beautiful. I'm gonna turn and face the wall and then bring the hands up over you. Now I could have stayed in that last foundation and created so much variety with different emotions and different vantage points. Um, but the point is to show you how easy it is to stay in a foundation and get a lot of variety for your clients and have the ability to just be free and clear so that you can create. Mm -hmm. Watch my fingers. We're gonna rock, relax them like a ballerina and just run them down and across your decollete. Eyes down, gorgeous. Bring this arm forward onto the leg for me with that, but go ahead and drop that shoulder still. Bring the head up just a little bit. Bring that hair right into the side. Oh my God, you're a gorgeous creature. yourself up against it. This hand here. Face down to me. Drop that shoulder. Relax those fingers. Collapse that decollete. 
<laughs> Keep this open but collapse a little. Arch that back for me. Face right to me. Chin to me. To be honest with you, I had a really hard time leaving the standing foundation. I wanted to stay and keep playing. It was hard to just do five, um, five different poses within each one of the foundations. Let me see. Face around to me. Beautiful. Just like that. Amazing. Look. I want you to look towards the wall with that. Straighten your head up on its axis. Perfect. Chin down just a little. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to come a little bit closer to the edge. Good. And I want you to bring both of those hands behind you on the bench. We're going to keep them on the bench. Yep. So come a little bit closer to the edge, arms behind you. Bring the shoulder around to me and drop into this a little bit. Good. And you guys can see how with very minor tweaks in a setting, uh, just the possibilities are endless. Like there's so much that you can create. And once you actually add this to the way that you shoot, once this becomes a tool that becomes natural to you and you're free of all of the mental chaos and you're just clear to create, you kind of get addicted to working in these foundations and it's super fun and exciting. You just want to keep going. Sometimes it's hard to move on from a foundation. Oftentimes I'll work in it until I've completely exhausted all of my possibilities and then I'll go on to the next thing. Absolutely gorgeous, babe, beautiful. Scoot your bum towards the back of the bench now. And you're going to keep that leg crossed and you're gonna come forward onto those arms and go ahead and drop your decollete. Good, 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 just like that. I want you to look to the side with that, but drop into me, still drop into me, and then look to the side. Eyes cast down, so face to the side, eyes cast down. The shoulder that's closest to me, can you drop it a little bit more? Beautiful, breathe with it. <sighs> So now we're going to do something a little bit untraditional. You're going to sit on the edge of the bench, legs wide open. There we go. Come a little bit closer to the edge of the bench. Perfect. Again, such a minor adjustment. And there's so, so many things that you can do. Um, if you shoot from above, if you come below, if you go to the right, you go to the left. Um, bigger changes to the poses. There's so many things to do within the foundation that can create so much variety for you and help you not get overwhelmed. So now we're gonna move into a kneeling pose. I'm gonna have you scooch back just a tiny bit. Fantastic, good. Now I'm gonna have you press your hips towards the window. And as you press your This is honestly one of my favorite foundations, especially when I'm coaching for emotion. I love being in this foundation. I could probably do an entire session with just kneeling poses, kneeling on a bed, kneeling on a floor, kneeling in a chair, kneeling in front of a bed. Um, yeah, kneeling everywhere. <laughs> right now, beautiful. Okay, so the next one, I'm gonna have you go ahead and come down into a squat, right about there. Keep those legs apart for me though. Good. We're going to push our hip this way. Perfect. We're going to turn our body this way. We're going to take this hand and we're going to put it behind us on the bed. So we're going to lean back into that. I'm going to take this hand and we're going to bring it into our hair. Beautiful, beautiful. Eyes closed with that for me. Now we're gonna go ahead and open those legs and sit all the way into it. Good, you're gonna bring your hands forward like this, coming towards me. You're gonna bring this shoulder towards me, come this way, good. Stagger your hands just a little bit for me and the chin comes up nice and playful. <laughs> Perfect, big happy smile with that, beautiful. Perfect, amazing. Put those hands on your thighs for me. That same thing. <laughs> Gorgeous, right there, beautiful. Perfect. Push your bum back just a little bit, so push yourself back. A little bit more. 
good. And now you're gonna come towards me. Drop this shoulder. But instead of looking at me, I want you out the window. <sighs> Beautiful. This hand that's closest to me, bring it back a little bit further. Right out the window. <sighs> Come up against the headboard. I'm going to take this pillow away. And you're going to move all the way back up against the headboard. And go ahead and kneel, still facing that way. Perfect. And you're going to come down into it, press your butt into it. Yep, and now tilt your head back to it. Backhand goes up on the wall for me, like this, higher so I can see it. This hand comes down right in between your legs. Bring that elbow closer to your face. Chin goes up, it feels good. Again. Using things in your foreground is an awesome way and, and looking for different vantage points is great too to add more variety to each of your foundations. So now we're going to move into the lying poses. And again, millions of possibilities, just endless. Um, and I challenge you guys, I'm going to give you five and you're going to go on and you're going to think of like 15 or 20 more. And you're going to be like, oh my goodness, it's so easy when I use this categorical posing and work within these foundations because I can come up with all of these amazing things. I don't have to worry about the whole session. I get to do one at a time and be free. Stay on your tummy. One more time. Yep. I'm going to take this blankie and I'm going to wrap it right around her little, her little bum. Good. Just like that. And you're going to do the same thing. You're going to push that bum up nice and high for me with your head facing in the other direction. Both hands up. There we go. Beautiful. And the other arm, bring it in just a little bit for me. Fantastic. I'm just going to put this sheet so it's right. There we go. Good, good, good. So we're two shots in. A little bit of variety to your side facing the window then we're going to move to our third and you're going to come up nice and tall here perfect this leg's going to come up and over this hand's going to drop on and i'm going to see that elbow coming down like this beautiful stay nice and tall here perfect legs are pointed beautifully you're doing a good job this is awesome create a really pretty silhouette for her we're going to roll you over onto your back, but your head's going to come this way. Your feeties are going to go that way for me. So just do a little whoop. There we go. Most awesome. So you're going to bring your chin up nice and high. Beautiful. You're going to take these legs and the hips and you're going to twist everything in this direction and lengthen them out. Tilt this way. Good. This hand's going to come up like this. That hand is going to grab at the panty and pull it up for me. And I want you to try and get the bum down. Push it hard down. Yeah, push it harder down. Push into that and arch that back. Arch, 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 arch. Keep your legs together. Good. Chin comes up nice and high. Hand grabs onto the sheet. Full. Push a little harder. Got number four down. And again, we could have done a ton of different variations on that. Um, but that's for you guys to come up with. Okay. And you are going to pull at those panties. Hopefully you're starting to see how working within this categorical posing and using the foundations will allow you to truly be creative and not worry about memorizing all of the poses all at once and keeping in your head all of the things that you need to do in all of the different places in your setting, in your studio, on a prop, in a particular wardrobe outfit, you just get to stay in the moment and in that creative space of that one foundation, creating beautiful images for you and your client to be over the moon about. Guys, I don't know about you, but I totally had a blast. And I gotta be honest, I had a hard time 
um, sticking with five poses in each foundation. Like I just wanted to keep going. That's the amazing thing about this. Like, wow, talk about being in the moment and being able to embrace your creativity and all of the exploration that you get to do free of fear and chaos and all of the stuff that bogs us down as photographers. So I just want to recap really quick with you what categorical posing is. So first of all, it's important that we understand that in categorical posing or foundational posing, that we group poses that share similar characteristics into groups or what I oftentimes call a foundation. And I've found that the following categories encompass the majority of all of our posing possibilities. So for example, with our seated poses, they share one similar quality, right? They all have part of the bum on a surface supporting the weight of your subject. So when you're working in a sitting foundation, you always want to pose with the bum supporting the weight, but everything else can be creative. So I mean, it doesn't matter if you're sitting on a coffee table or if you're sitting on the floor um, <clears throat> or endless possibilities on the edge of a couch, um, up on the top of a couch, um, perched on a bed, on a shay. Um, if you're not in a studio and you're outdoors, there's a million places to pose. But that foundation, you can always assume that absolutely – the bum is going to be supporting the weight of your client, your client or your subject, and you get to be as creative as you want to be and stick in that, stick in that foundation and just challenge yourself to come up with as many possible things as you can come up with. Moving on, we have our kneeling foundation and yeah, okay, you might have guessed it. Kneeling poses are anything that the knees are supporting the weight and we just explored kneeling poses for individuals and couples and in them all, obviously, the knees are supporting the weight of the body. So again, you have endless possibilities for being absolutely creative in kneeling. It can be on a bed. It can be in front of a bed. It can be on a couch. It can be on a coffee table. It can be on a chair. It can be on the ground. It can be outdoors. It can be anywhere. It can be kind of crumpled up or or it can be big and beautiful. It can be oh, soft and inward. There's just so many different things you can do with it. It's I, like I told you, I love kneeling. It's probably my favorite foundation. I'll kneel anywhere. I absolutely love it. It's beautiful to explore. And then when we think about our standing poses, we know that these poses, which are limitless, will always have the feet or at least a foot supporting the weight of our subject. And these poses, again, they're great for all different types of emotive states. And they're also great for a tremendous amount of sets. I think oftentimes we think about these these different foundations and we will group them with, you know, maybe standing is just up against a wall or up against a backdrop, but it doesn't have to be that way. You can stand next to the bed or you can be standing using a chair or you can be standing in, I don't know, a stairwell and using the stairwell for standing poses and interesting standing poses. You can be standing up on top of the bed and jumping around. There's just, I mean, seriously, have fun and explore. And now we're going to move on to our lying poses. And this is where the subject is supported by the trunk of the body. So basically anything where the trunk of the body is making contact with a surface. So you can get really creative with your laying poses or your lying poses. I love to like I can this is another one of those foundations that I can get stuck in and have a hard time getting out of because I'm having so much fun. There's so much more to lying poses than the traditional kind of sleepy stuff. And you I mean, you can do crazy things like having someone kind of like falling off of furniture or falling onto the furniture um, in a lying position. You can shoot from above with a lying position. You can actually have someone up and you can shoot from below actually in a lying position if you have them kind of falling off of a shay lounge or kind of melting down a couch like there's just so many fun like things that we don't think of but when you're in a foundation and you have to challenge yourself that's where all the creativity comes in and that's where you make all of the magic and it it turns our posing routines from chaotic 
you know, stressful, rut driven things into just pure bliss and like living in the moment and tapping into the divine and just being beautifully creative. So I want you to keep in mind, this is absolutely the case with every single one of the foundations that you're working in. Just be present, be in the moment. Don't worry about the poses that you think that you have to memorize. Know that you can tap into your divinity, your own divinity, and your own creativity, and you can just play and have a wonderful time and create beautiful things. Okay, you amazing photographer. We've categorized the posing possibilities by their similar qualities, but how does this alleviate those blank moments that you seem to come up against? Well, now it's time to take those categories and actually bring them into our approach as we shoot. So the first thing you want to do is you want to take a look at your location, whether it's a, you're working in a park or you're working at a studio, maybe you're working in an office or perhaps in a, in a living room. You want to take an inventory of what's actually available to you in regards to furniture, surfaces, like floors and flooring and walls and things like that. And move into your foundations. So once you've selected an area to shoot, decide which foundation you'll work in first. So let's look at this approach together. We're gonna go through a pretty fun exercise together now. Okay, so here we go. We've learned a bunch today. So we're gonna go through our next level thought exercise. And this is how creative we can get once we understand the basics of categorical thinking and foundational posing. And you guys, Everything changes from here. I promise you. You start working with this pivot. Whew. I mean, man, it's it is going to set you on a path to growth and a journey that is going to be amazing. I'm so excited for every single one of you. Um, and if you actually implement this, if you start practicing it, for some of us, it'll come all at once. Some of us, are, our minds work this way. For others like me who are kind of, you know, little Tasmanian devilish and are all over the place and get, you know, distracted kind of easily by bright, shiny stuff and want to do the things, it takes a little bit of practice and a little bit of discipline and that's okay. Um, But it works fantastic for almost all of us. Um, And I'm excited to see where we're all going to do with it and where we're going to go. So let's jump into our exercise. Let's go. Let's do it. I'm excited. Okay. So we've thoroughly covered categorized posing possibilities by their similar qualities, but how does this alleviate those blank moments that we've talked about and that so many of us struggle with? Well, you know, now that we understand this method and how it can free up mental space and remove chaos and enable creativity, allow us to like be in the moment and truly create, we really need to get those juices flowing because this is something we want to like, we want to hop on this. So it's time to embrace this tool and bring it into our approach. Like let's bring it into the way that we shoot. So what I want us to do together is I want us to take a look at this room and we're going to start by taking an inventory of what's available to you in regards to furniture and surfaces. Um, Again, like, you know, places to sit, places to stand, places to kneel, places to lay, all of that good kind of stuff. And then I'm going to go through it and talk to you about what I see, but I want you to look at it as well for yourself. And once you've selected an area to shoot, in your head, kind of decide which foundation you'll work in first. So let's look at this approach together and see how this might work. So if I were walking into this room, I think the first thing that would like call my attention would be the soju screen at the back of the room Um, because it's real pretty and I like it. So I would look at that and be like, okay, I definitely want to shoot there, right? So I'm already formulating a game plan in my head. So soju screen, that's happening. And then I see, for some reason, the next thing I see is the rug off to the side of the bed. And I'm like, hmm, what can I do on that rug? Okay, that's going to be the second place that I shoot. And then I see the chair. And what are the things I'm going to do with the chair? Okay, we'll figure that out when I get to the chair. And then finally, the bed. The bed's the last thing that I'm looking at. And perhaps that's because, you know, we're so used to shooting on beds as boudoir photographers that 
it's nice to do things a little bit different sometimes. Um, I see the plant. The plant could be fun. I can use that for foreground. I see a lot of pompous grass over there that I could potentially use. So I'm kind of like assessing the situation. And if I didn't have categorical posing, I'll tell you right now, I would go bananas. I would like run over to the soju screen and do a couple of things. And then I would run over to the, the rug and like get a couple shots. And then I'd be like, oh, shoot, I forgot to do this thing on the soju screen. And then I'd hit back to the soju screen. And then maybe I'd be like, oh, I'll just lay on the bed. And I'd be like, wait, wait, get on your knees. And then, oh, God, oh, the chair. I forgot to shoot in the chair. Like, let's do this thing over the chair. Have a seat in the chair. So if I if I didn't stay organized in my thought process, I would just be all over the place. Um, so I know for me, in order for me to be free of that mental chaos and be as creative as I want to be and produce images that are just ugh, full of life and next level and totally stand out, I need to use this tool. I absolutely, it's one of the foundations to my methodology. So I would very methodically, and I almost hate to use that word, but I would very methodically move over to the soju screen so that I could very creatively work. So I would move over to the soju screen and the first thing I would want to do over there is I would want to do standing poses to the right of it, in between um, the wall and where the soju screen is ending. Um, maybe some some bodyscapes and some tight shots, like almost kind of voyeuristically in a standing foundation. Sorry, I didn't start with that. I would start definitely start with the standing foundation. And I would do some standing poses from the side kind of behind it, peeking through it. Um, I would probably pose standing position and then shoot through some of that grating that I see in the middle of it. Um, I would come around to the side of it and do some standing poses on the side of it. And then I would move my subject to the front of it and I would just bust out as many standing poses as I could possibly think of on this. And then the next thing I would do as I would reposition that soju screen so it was pushed back a little bit more towards the wall and get that pompous grass out of my way, grab that rug, or not that rug, sorry, grab that throw off the bed and throw it down on the ground in front of it. And you betcha, we would get into kneeling poses right away. So <laughs> I would then move into kneeling poses on this soju screen and I would dominate that. I would create as many kneeling poses as I could possibly create on this soju screen. And I know most people might look at this and think, kneeling poses on the soju screen, really? Like this is a standing piece, but it's not. It, it can be a anything piece. We might not be able to sit on it, but we can definitely stand next to it. We could definitely kneel in front of it. It would make a beautiful backdrop for kneeling poses. Um, and then I would move into my sitting poses and then I would probably push it all the way back up against the far wall and make room for myself so that I could have my subject lying in front of it as well. So now I've covered three of my four foundations in front of the soju screen, um, some of which if you were to look at the soju screen, you might not actually think to do that with them. So yeah, I would wrap up as much as I could on that soju screen, challenge myself, be as creative as possible, and really stay in the moment with each one of them. So I stayed connected with my client, and I stayed connected with my own creativity, and didn't get distracted by all of the other things that were around me. The next thing that I would do as I would come over to that rug. And I would definitely start with some sitting poses. Like I'm already seeing like a crisscross applesauce kind of thing, like a Sunday morning kind of thing, like a big happy smile sitting in front of the bed. I would definitely push my client up against the bed um, and having have them arch their back over their bed. So bum to the back of the bed and then their back arched over the bed and arms falling up over the bed. Um, I would have them sitting sideways, leaning onto the bed, kind of falling, draping over onto the bed, um, while seated on, sitting on their, their hip and their, and their bum. Um, yeah. So I would explore all of the sitting poses that I could do. I could possibly do on this. 
And then I would definitely move into a kneeling position or kneeling foundation again on this rug. And I would go bananas. Um, I would probably turn my client at this point towards the natural light coming in and use the, the plant behind me. And I would explore all of the poses that I could do in kneeling with this, probably grab some pompous grass, um, and use that for foreground, grab one of the throws and use that as a prop and just have a blast playing in a kneeling position. Um, I might even actually, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, oh my God, it would look so amazing. Like having my subject like crawling towards the bed in that kneeling pose, crawling away from me towards the bed in that kneeling pose. I mean, my mind's racing with like all of the amazing things I could do just in the kneeling pose. And I'll tell you this, if I was looking at the whole room, my mind would be racing so much that it would completely shut down and I would have that blank moment. But because I can keep everything in that one category, that one kneeling pose on that one particular place, I'm able to manage all of that and be totally creative. So I would do sitting and kneeling there for sure. Um, I might try some, sta- I would definitely try some standing. Absolutely. Actually, um, with, cause I love flat beauty light. So I would definitely face my client towards the window and use that green plant, um, and have the client standing on the rug and shooting in that direction. And then my attention next gets drawn to the chair. That wicker chair is gorgeous. And so I would be heading over there. But I would not sit my client down on the chair first. That's not what I would do because that's so very expected. And I want to challenge myself to be creative and use my foundations in ways that are like different and deliver things to my clients that are different and exciting and kind of set myself above, you know, what everybody else is creating, something different. So I would do things where my client was standing to the side of it, um, standing behind it, peeking out just a little bit, standing actually in front of it in a really strong, like powerful pose. Um, and then I would do things like pulling one foot up onto it and having them look back over at me, um, holding onto the back of the chair and kind of falling back into a back bend kind of pose. So I would explore all of the standing poses that I could do with it. And then you guessed it, then move into kneeling. I definitely move into the kneeling poses here. So I'd prop my client up and do all of the kneeling poses that I could do. Um, probably facing the wall. So shooting into the window, having them facing me, kneeling over it, um, bring them down on the floor, kneeling in front of it, um, kneeling, draping their torso over onto it. Like I would just, all of the kneeling stuff that I could possibly do. And then, yeah, I think I would sit them down. It's a good enough chair that I think we could get some really regal photos that would be beautiful. And I would explore my kneeling pose. And then finally, I've got this amazing bed, right? And the first thing we think is, oh, well, I'm going to go to the bed and I'm going to do my lying poses. Nah, I'm going to go over to the bed and I'm going to go ahead and do some standing poses. So I'm going to put some separation between my client and the bed. I'm probably going to give like four feet between my client and the bed and shoot some really beautiful kneel or excuse me, standing poses in front of the bed, some strong, some really soft, some vulnerable, some longing, all in a standing position, which can absolutely be done. And then I think I would actually throw my client up on top of the bed um, and have them standing on the bed, probably toss those pillows off to the side and get them right up against that wall to the, let's see, what is that? To the left of those mirrors that are on the wall and have them standing on the bed, but leaning up against the wall, um, probably some jumping poses on the wall as well. Um, and perhaps like walking to the bed, um, so that I'm getting, this is still standing, right? Walking towards the bed so I can get photos of them walking towards the bed, walking across the room towards the light and me shooting them sideways and them looking over their shoulder at me or looking down demurely or just looking very thoughtfully out the window, Um, And then maybe somewhere they're looking over their shoulder and smiling at me, Um, all standing poses. 
then we're going to have a seat. We are going to sit down in front of that bed for sure. Um, it's everything behind it is just so beautiful and there's so much we can do to create beautiful images. So I would next move into all of my sitting poses on the floor and then I'd go ahead and bring my sitting poses up onto the bed. And I don't know, this feels like a really cozy, comfy environment to me. It's probably where I would start with an emotional feel. Um, lots of being wrapped up in the blankets, maybe having the blankets wrapped over shoulders, um, lots of tugging at the blankets, kind of Sunday morning feels again. Um, but also, I think we would definitely have to bring some sexy into this with the laying too. Lots of grabbing at the sheets, lots of hands engaged with the body, lots of pleasure, lots of desire posing. Um, lots of like really strong emotive posing in laying positions. And I think I would have to finish it up with kneeling on this bed because that's probably where I would stay the longest. It's again, one of my favorite, love the kneeling. Um, and I would shoot it from every possible direction and every vantage point using things in the foreground, making it look voyeuristic, creating images that looked like they were longing, creating images that felt very vulnerable creating images that felt really coy and, and flirtatious, lots of joy, creating joyful images in kneeling poses, creating lots of desire, lots of pleasure. Um, and yeah, and just having a lot of fun with it. So if I had to think about this all at once again, I would just be like, uh, uh, shut down and blank. I don't know what to do next. And I'd be spinning like a top trying to do it. But when I methodically think about how to be creative and I push myself just to work in that one foundation, that divine thing happens. You get to be present in the moment with your client and you get to be absolutely creative. So I want you guys to take some time. This is going to be on replay. You'll have the opportunity to grab this. If you want to screen grab the picture, you can do that too. And I want you to look at this or find a photo like it and look at a room with a, you know, a setup or in your studio, any one of your sets. Go take a look at your set. Go walk into your bedroom right now or into your living room and think, okay, there's a chair right there. What things can I do with this chair that are different? Like, how can I do kneeling poses with this chair? How can I do standing poses with this chair? And and just focus on each one of the foundations. Don't think about the couch that's behind you or a beautiful painting that you have. Or if you're in a bedroom, don't think about the bed. Or if there's a Shea lounge sitting around somewhere. Or if you're lucky enough to have this, you know, rattan soju screen. Don't even think about that. Just one thing at a time. and And then go through your foundations with it. So I challenge you all to do that. And before you go into a shoot and do it, just practice doing that looking at spaces. And then once you feel comfortable doing that looking at spaces, then start integrating this into the way that you shoot. I promise you that if you do this, this is going to change forever the way that you shoot. Those posing guides that you rely on, the scrolling through Pinterest, the feeling inadequate and not like everybody else, the... Oh, the ruts that we get into, the boredom, the lack of creativity you feel, it's all going to be gone because you're being present, you're being in the moment, you're creating connection, and you're truly connecting with your own creativity by eliminating all of the mental chaos. So yeah, that's our exercise. I'm, I'm really in advance proud of you guys because I know you're going to go do it and you're going to kick ass at doing it. And I can't wait to see all of the images that you create. So now that we understand posing foundations, categorical thinking, the question is, how do we create the emotion packed images that just blow people away? Well, We've learned how to free our mind and be creative and create an abundance with categorical thinking. But now we have a new problem. We can get the poses, but we need to create connection and truly execute insanely emotive and powerful images to really take our work to the place all artists strive for. Honestly, there is so much more that can help us refine these poses and the great news is that using categorical thinking 
allows your creative energy and the space it needs to do just that. You're not bothered trying to memorize all the poses anymore. Now you have all of this room for creativity. So if you're ready to stop living in constant fear in comparison, and if you wanna rise above the fold, if you're ready to feel confident and rooted in your value as a true artist, then don't miss day two of Boot Camp. It's October 29th at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, where we talk about exactly what is needed to document the most poignant and beautiful aspects of humanity. We've laid the groundwork down with categorical thinking and foundational posing. Now we need to build upon that with a really solid understanding of why body language is so incredibly important and how photographers wield it to get everything they want as creatives. So let me ask you, do you really wanna keep scrolling through Pinterest and Instagram, copying someone else's poses or being stuck in the same old tired go-to poses with every client every time that leaves you feeling, you know, bored and unfulfilled, like something's missing from your work? Or do you wanna approach your work in a whole new way? setting yourself on the path to becoming the brilliant photographer you've always wanted to be. After completing day two of this boot camp, I promise you, you'll be on the path to creating the work you've always dreamed about. And guess what? You're gonna stand out because you will be creating work people have never seen before, giving your clients value in ways that they never expected, leading to more bookings, rave reviews, higher sales. Now, it's time to answer your questions. We're gonna go ahead and jump into that Q&A and bridge all these gaps.